Hello, and welcome to the SBTI's training on supplier engagement. This session covers module number four, target implementation. After completing this module, you will know how to, first, assemble a strong supplier engagement team, second, structure expectations, communications, and resources to set up your suppliers for success, and lastly, select the right data collection solution for gathering supplier data. A target implementation plan is defined by five elements. First, defining team roles and responsibilities. Second, defining supplier expectations and timelines. Third, determining how to handle supplier communication. Fourth, developing supporting resources for suppliers. And fifth, selecting a supplier data collection program. Each of these elements will be discussed in detail in this module. Implementing a supplier engagement program is a team effort, and it is critical to assemble the right internal team along with a strong program manager. In the previous module, we identified the stakeholder groups who are typically involved in supplier engagement. Your supplier engagement team will draw from these groups and drive the program's implementation. Though each company will structure its team differently, there are a number of key roles which need to be filled. These include a program manager, a program sponsor, a sourcing and procurement leader, a technical expert on science-based targets and greenhouse gas, a communications lead, a data management and analytics lead, and a legal lead. Depending on the makeup of your company, you may choose to fill multiple of these roles with the same individual. Additional details on these roles can be found in Section 5 of the guidance. To lead your team, it's critical to have one primary program manager who takes responsibility for the program and ensures progress towards the targets. This person should have a passion for sustainability and a knowledge of science-based targets, should have a capacity to take on the increased responsibility of the role, and should ideally be embedded within the sourcing and procurement teams to ensure integration with existing suppliers. Once the team is set, the next step is to set your suppliers up for success by outlining clear expectations, instituting strong communications, and developing resources to support them. First, you must define supplier expectations and timelines. You should communicate to your suppliers that they should set their science-based target within five years. Further, you should define the channel and frequency with which suppliers should communicate progress updates. Finally, you should align on how to frame the expectations for your suppliers. Will the target setting be positioned as a requirement, expectation, or something that's encouraged? This framing will have implications on the entire supplier engagement process. Next, you should ensure that supplier communications are clear and consistent. To start, you should make a strong initial statement about science-based targets and communicate the target implementation process to your selected suppliers. This statement should draw from the supplier expectations we covered in the previous step. From here, your sourcing and procurement departments should be prepared to send follow-ups and reminders to your suppliers and should be equipped to answer their questions. Within this, you should determine the frequency of communication to suppliers and ensure that your communications are reaching the most relevant contacts. Finally, you should equip your suppliers with the resources they need to set targets. Your suppliers will be at various levels in their climate maturity journeys, from low maturity suppliers, who will be new to these efforts, to high maturity suppliers who have strong existing climate programs. The resources you make available should take this into consideration. The good news is, there are many existing documents you can draw from. We've included links to some examples below. These resources should be shared at the very start of the process to avoid loss of momentum. The final step in implementing targets is to put in place a solution for collecting supplier data. This data is critical for your supplier engagement program, both for your target tracking purposes and to enable visibility of your supplier's program maturity. You should ask three key questions to determine which solution to use. First, is the aim to gather only climate-related data or will there be other ESG data needs? 
Second, do you want to use an existing out-of-the-box solution or a proprietary questionnaire? And third, is there an industry reporting tool which could be used to avoid duplicate requests across shared suppliers? These questions will help narrow down on the solution which bets meets your needs. At the bottom of this page, we've listed some off-the-shelf examples of solutions for collecting supplier data. More details on each of these solutions is included in Section 5 of the full guidance. At the very least, the data you collect from suppliers should provide information on their greenhouse gas emission reduction targets so they can be validated against SBTI criteria. There are eight types of data which will be required from suppliers to set science-based targets. First, determining whether the supplier has an emission reduction target will provide basic detail on where suppliers are on the journey. Target boundary determines which scopes and emissions categories are covered. Target coverage will then communicate what portion of included scopes and categories to cover. Target type identifies whether a target is absolute, intensity, or supplier engagement based. Baseline year provides the year from which progress is measured. Target year provides the year in which the target will be achieved. Target reduction or ambition outlines target percentage reduction from baseline for absolute and intensity targets. And lastly, SBTI's target validation provides the final check as to if the target has been validated by the SBTI. Your supplier data collection solution should be able to capture these data points. You may also consider gathering greenhouse gas emissions data to enable supply chain emissions tracking in the future. Although primary greenhouse emissions data is not required in the near term, in the long term, it will be necessary to track reductions in supply chain emissions. It also indicates where your suppliers are in their process and allows you to review the quality of emissions data being reported. Finally, you may face concerns from suppliers about data confidentiality and sensitivity. To build trust and mitigate these issues, you should consider the following guidelines. First, lead by example to build credibility with suppliers, demonstrating your own actions to track and manage emissions. Carefully consider whether highly sensitive data, such as specific locations or proprietary product information needs to be collected. Respect business sensitive data by establishing a secure internal process, which ensures the data is not shared or accessed for any purpose other than environmental tracking. These measures should be communicated when requesting data. Finally, consider leveraging external technology solutions which help maintain supplier data ownership and confidentiality. Some examples of these technologies are included in the description below. Thank you for listening to this module on target implementation. We hope this information will help as you engage your supply chain on the decarbonization journey.